Good morning. God has been good to us again. He's blessed us to come to this place and to celebrate uh, the time that we have um, circling around the Lord's table and, and fellowship one with another. Even though this is what the world might call Easter, we celebrate the resurrection every Lord's Day when we gather around his table. But, you know, as my uncle used to say, I'm not hating it. If, there, if you find somebody in a, a wind blowing in the right direction, my uncle used to say, you better get in it. And so if, in fact, the world chooses to, to take one day a year to celebrate what we celebrate on a weekly basis, then I'll take it. No matter what uh, brings you to worship this morning, you ought to be glad that God has blessed you to come into this place and to serve him in spirit and in truth. Welcome to those who are visiting with us in person, as well as those who are on our live stream. We are just so glad to have you worship with us, and we offer an invitation, and we'll offer it again at the end of the sermon time. Uh, as we used to say at another congregation, when you get tired of visiting with us, join us and put your hand behind the plow and work with us here. Anybody, uh, is this your first time in person? If this is your first time in person, raise your hand. We've got a gift that we want to give to you. Steve, put your hand down. Don't do it. I'm kidding. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was going to bother him anyway. Leave me alone. <laughs> you know, I have to qualify when we get into the lesson. I have to qualify uh, and tell people I'm going to give them something because they're kind of hesitant to raise their hand. They go up and they put it back down. They go up, put it back down. Then when I say I'm going to give you something, then their hand go way back up. So just glad to have everybody with us. I'm glad to see especially my regular Trent uh, congregational family. I'm glad, I'm glad to be with you on the prayer list this morning, as has already um, been mentioned. We've had some names on there as well, um, but let's remember also pray for Ronnie Williams, pray for Doug Tackett's parents, and as well as the Whitsitt family that's already been um, mentioned. Uh, 41 days ago, I believe Dwight passed, and we prayed for the family then and now. Um, his wife, Brenda, has, uh, has passed within that just short 41-day time span. Let's remember to pray for the family um, as, they're, as they're going through uh, this, time, this time of bereavement. But for, for Christians, let me just say a word, and then I'll move on. You know, the Bible says, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Um, for the Christians who really have put their hand behind the plow, and now they take their, they go from labor to reward. If you have died in Christ, and I'm off script for a second, but I feel like I need to say this. We need to change our language, especially when Christians pass. And you hear us talking, well, we lost so-and-so, and we lost so No, you didn't lose nothing. You lose your car keys. I don't know where my car keys are, but when, when a Christian dies in the Lord, I know exactly where they are. They have been found in him. So we need to change we need to change our language. That was free. That wasn't a part of it. I just, I just threw that one. I just threw that one in. Congratulations to the Trent Robotics team, the young people that did that, as well as the Trent Community Club um, for hosting and participating in that activity. See, church, this is what excites me about doing what I do, the opportunity to get into the community and to let them know that not only is the Church of Christ in Trent alive and well, but we are willing participants in the community so that we can all just kind of pull together and, and encourage each other. And so congratulations to the young people, especially and everybody who helped um, with that uh, robotics event and the Trent Community Club for your actual hosting in that. Remember, there will be a Trent Community Cleanup starting on April the 14th through the 24th, uh, primarily sponsored by the Methodist Church, but we're working with them um, as well. They want you to know you can bring out your trash, any junk, things that you uh, need to get rid of. Old eyeglasses can be taken to City Hall old appliances, metal, wire, that kind of thing. There are going to be some roll-off dumpsters that will be set up at Rocky's Shop, 226 Northwest 1st. And I didn't put it on the handout, but they also want me to tell you that at this particular time, they're not set up to take tires. Sorry about that. But anything else, metal, um, wood, that kind of stuff, they can take that. and Those things will be, will be hauled off, but not 
no no tires right now that can't they they're not set up to take the tires. A couple of things on the calendar, and I'll get into the message um, today. On the 23rd, um, I will be preaching at the Merkel Church. We'll do another pulpit exchange, and I forget the brother's name. I didn't write it down. He'll be preaching here, and I'll be preaching in Merkel. On the 24th, the area-wide men's fellowship. Uh, men, that's going to be at the Jim Ned Valley Church in Tuscola. We had an excellent showing last time. We met with the bro other brothers in the area, um, and it was it was an outstanding, outstanding time. So that's going to take place again on the 24th um, at 6 p.m. And then Fifth Sunday Singing is also going to be in Tuscola at the Jim Ned Church. So let's remember to participate in those activities and encourage people. And again, it, it's turnabout is only fair play. If, in fact, we invite people to come here, then it's only fair and gracious that we go and support activities that they have as well. This month, we're talking about, and I've got the cards I've got to put out on the, on the back table. I'm talking about passion. Um, and, and we're going to talk about love lessons from the cross. And a lot of times, even though today is what the world calls Easter, um, a lot of times we look at the cross and we only think about the cross during communion time. And when we think about the cross, sadly, we only think about and talk about the nails that were put in Christ's hand and, and, and the nails that were put in his feet. That's only one dimension of really what we need to be talking about when it comes to the cross. And so this month, I'm going to talk about love lessons from the cross. And I'm, I'm centering all this around the, the statement, the phrase, listen, y'all, it wasn't the nails. See, we, we think about the cross and all we think about is the nails. It's so much more than that. It was not the nails. See, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he seemed powerless in and of himself to come down from the cross. But it wasn't the nails in his hands and, and it wasn't the nails in his feet that kept him up on that cross. It was his obedience to the Father and his love for mankind, namely you and me, that kept him up on the cross and, and, and kept him for all humanity to endure the cross and then ultimately to get up from the grave. So today, let's look at Luke 24 and let's talk about how Christ was lifted from that cross by love. Love lifted me. Luke 24, the Bible says, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices that they had prepared and, and they went to the tomb and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And, and when they entered, Something, something miraculous happened. They, they, they didn't find uh, the body of the Lord Jesus. And, and while they were wondering about this, Luke says, two men in clothes that gleamed like light, lightning stood beside them. And in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said a very important statement to them. A very important question. And one of the things that Luke brings out that Matthew, Mark don't, and we'll look at that in just a second. Here's the question. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners to be crucified. And on the third day, raise again and verse 8 is what I want you to think about and we'll talk about then they remembered his words let's pray father thank you for the blessing that you are a God of your word thank you father for the power of the resurrection that continues to affirm to us that you are God Almighty we pray father for the lesson we pray for those who are listening we pray for not only um, audible listening, but we pray, Lord, for obedience. We pray that people will get the, the message of the word and live according to your word. Father, thank you for loving us so much. 
that you sent Christ to die on the cross for our sins, making our connection with you possible. Help us, Lord, to always live worthy of that vocation. Thank you for all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Even though the world calls today Easter and they, they, they call this time of just celebrating the resurrection, I want us to be reminded that Jesus' actions and his words were validated and empowered by the resurrection. And, and, and Luke says something when those women went to, to prepare that body and to pay tribute with spices. Luke, Luke brings out something that if you think about it from a human standpoint, it really doesn't make sense. And you and I have never seen it. Think about it. We've been to funerals. And we normally go to the cemetery. We normally go to the graveyard. And the preacher there, the person, the officiant there, normally says something along the lines of, we have gone as far as we can go with our dearly beloved. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. And normally, after that, the, the funeral staff will dismiss us. And, and guess what happens? We leave that body right there in the cemetery. Now, I've not heard... And I don't think I want to hear that if the body is not in the cemetery, do not tell Brother Fample, okay? <laughs> if, it ain't, if that body is no longer there. But normally, we leave that body in the cemetery. But something happened with Jesus' body. And, and I want us to look at this real quick from all four of the Gospels and see, it, it's really called a synoptic look. If you, if you look at all four of them, like you're looking straight down, you see what's common in all of them. I want us to look at the four instances of the, of the resurrection in all four of the Gospels, and I want us to take away a, a fact from this that will help us better understand two things. Number one, the life of Christ, and number two, his death and his resurrection. Matthew has an interesting take and starts off on this. And Matthew is going to show us what I call a confirmation. Matthew, when those ladies were, were, were coming up to the tomb and the stone was already rolled away, Matthew says that I invite you to come and look. And he's not here. He's gone. He is risen. I want you to come and see where the place that he lay. Now, those women were braver than Brother Fambo would have been. Okay? I'm just telling you. Those women had a lot more. I would have said something along the lines of, oh, y'all going this way? I'm going this way. Feet don't fail me now. <laughs> but that is just from a human perspective. See, a lot of times in our life, if, I, if we're trying to understand something with our human brain, we want confirmation, don't we? We want to see it. We want to smell it. We want to touch it. The only way I'm going to believe it, if I see it with my own eyes. Well, they said, come and see the place where he lay. Didn't say he was still there. Come see the place where he lay. See, the resurrection defies human logic. And, and some things we can't explain, even if we saw them with our own eyes, we couldn't explain if we saw it. Normally, this is what I told you earlier, normally when we go to a funeral, we leave the body at the cemetery. And in this particular instance, where they laid Jesus, he was not there. He had been risen. And you remember what Thomas said, and we, we laugh at Thomas, but there's a little Thomas in all of us, and we call him Doubting Thomas. You remember, Thomas kind of showed you his hand uh, long before um, Jesus' death. John says it like this, Thomas, who was also called Didymus, one of the 12 disciples, when Jesus came to him, so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas, he said something that probably Brother Fambo would have said, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Be careful what you say. Be, 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 be careful. As Granny used to say, it'll come, back, it'll come back to bite you. It'll come back to haunt you. Verse 26, time passed. And John said, a week later, the disciples were at the house again, and Thomas was with them. And, and, and though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Hey, no, no, he didn't say that. Peace, peace be with you. And verse 27, then he said to Thomas, Come here. 
put your, put your finger here. See, see, see my hands. Reach out your hand and, and put it on my side and, and stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, probably what Brother Fambo would have said, Jimmy, my Lord and my God. <laughs> see, one of the things we need to understand is just because we can't rationalize it with our own human brain doesn't mean it didn't happen. We need to have and exercise faith. And that's the, the bottom line to what we try to tell people. We need to have faith. What's faith? Faith is believing in something that you can't necessarily see. Number two, when you go to read Mark's account of this resurrection, the ladies point out a constraint. They, 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 they point out something that might be a hindrance in serving. In Mark 16 and verse 3, when those ladies were going up to the, 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 the grave, they ask a question, hey, who's going to roll the stone away? And I thank them for being forward thinking, thinking about what obstacles and how they're going to overcome obstacles in the midst of serving God. That couldn't have been some of us. Some of us, with the, the least little bit of friction, the least little bit of an obstacle, hey, why are we going up there? Ain't nobody to roll the stone away. I'm going home. I'll see you later. No, they kept going. And I appreciate them. Even though there was going to be an issue of constraint, they kept going. Mark 16, God had already worked that thing out. Verse 4, when they looked up, they saw that the stone was very large and had already been rolled away. But they were acknowledging of this constraint, but they didn't let that constraint or that obstacle stop them. They were still moving forward to serve our Lord. And then when you read Mark's account of this after the resurrection, there's some people that were taking part in a conspiracy. They, 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 they were dealing with um, the fact that they believed, but they were trying to cover it up so that other people wouldn't believe. They were not only dealing with their own disbelief, but they were also guilty religious leaders, I'm looking at you, of aiding and abetting other people so that other people were not going to believe. They were trying to undermine. They were trying to cover it up. They were trying to stop people from actually seeing that Jesus had resurrected from the grave, but they didn't want word to get out. Listen to what Matthew said. Matthew said, while the women were on their way, some of the guards went to the city, and they reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. And when the chief priests had met with the elders, they, they, they devised a plan. They were scheming. Y'all don't know nothing about scheming. Scheming doesn't happen here in Trent. But outside of Trent, scheming happens. People get together, and they come up with a plan. The truth is here, and they put the truth aside, and they want to come up with their own way of how they want to handle the truth. The chief priests had met with the elders, and they devised a plan. And look at this. They gave the soldiers a large sum of money. Hush money. I'm going to leave that alone telling them, here's what you ought to say. His disciples came during the night and they stole him while, while we were asleep. Eh, wrong answer. But why are they doing this? Because the truth for them was more painful than the lie they tried to perpetrate. And see, one of the things that we have to do as, as Christians, we have to make sure, we talked about this in, in Bible class this morning, we have to make sure that we stand for truth based on God's word, irregardless of our personal feelings. The fact is, Christ got up from the grave. Christ did exactly what he said he was going to do, and these religious leaders and the soldiers couldn't handle it. So they tried to pay him off. Here's what you are to say. His disciples came during the night and they stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of truck covering it up. And I, you know, I'm, I'm going off script for just another second. You know, raising our children when, it, when, when they were younger, nothing bothered me. I mean, you could do just about anything to me, say about anything, but if you lie to me, uh, 
That basically told me, Miss Jennifer, if you lying to me, what you're telling me is I'm not worth the truth. And that's bad. So my children, my, all three of my children, got, they got the message quite early. And they would come and tell me things um, immediately. Pop, don't want you to hear it from the street because you got eyes and ears all over Abilene. So I'm going to just tell you this is what happened. And I would tell them, you will not be punished for telling me the truth. Now, you may have to suffer some consequences because of your actions, but I am not going to punish you for telling me the truth. They were covering this thing up. So the soldiers took the money, and they did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated, Matthew says, among the Jews until this day. But see, it's one thing to try to conspire and do things, but you're not going to keep the gospel down. You're not going to keep Christ in the grave. If death couldn't keep Christ in the grave, what makes you think a conspiracy with man is going to keep him in the grave? Right after that conspiracy was the Great Commission. Jesus got up from the grave. Jesus met with his disciples, and Jesus told them to go and teach the gospel based on the fact that I have resurrected from the dead. Matthew 18, 28, 18, you know this text. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples uh, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the end of the age. Did you ever make the connection that that great commission came after that conspiracy? You're not going to be able to keep the gospel down. Why? Because truth always rises above fiction. There's three reasons, and then I'm done. There's three reasons that we celebrate the resurrection, not just on what the world calls Easter, but really every day in our lives. There's three reasons that we celebrate the, the resurrection. One is because we follow Jesus because the resurrection verifies that Jesus was who he said he was. See, everybody dies, but name somebody outside of Jesus, and I'll wait who got up from the grave. Jesus is who he said he was going to be and who he is. Revelation 1.18, I'm the living one. I was dead and now look, I'm alive forever and ever. And Jesus says, I hold the keys to death and to Hades. Number two, why follow Jesus and why believe in this thing called the resurrection? Because the, res the resurrection signifies our position and our relationship with him. John 14, familiar text. And I'll be back to John 14 in a couple of weeks. But, but John says, my father's house has many rooms. And, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I'm going to come back. And I'm going to take you to be with me. So where I am, you will also be. And then why follow Jesus and why believe in this resurrection? Because the resurrection glorifies God and it shows God's Christ and God's supreme power. You remember Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18. Paul says Christ is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn uh, from the dead, among the dead, so that in everything he, God, Christ, must have supremacy. I like King James there. King James says he has the preeminence. See, not only do we celebrate the resurrection uh, every day by getting around the Lord's table every Lord's day, our lives are testament to the fact that Christ came up from the dead, and, and, and baptism is is symbolic of that. And I'm, I'm closing here. See, a lot of people have asked me, last week I had a conversation with two people, asked me the importance of why we need to be, be baptized because baptism washes away our sin. And at the same time, as you go down into that liquid tomb, that watery grave of baptism, you rise up, you resurrect, you come out of that to walk in newness of life. That old person is left in the baptism pool, and Paul says you rise up to become a new creation. He says really a new creature in Christ. Oh, you look the same, but see, now you are connected with God. 
and now you have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ and now you have been baptized and you come out of that watery grave of baptism, a new creature in Christ Jesus. The invitation time is a time for us to do just that, to obey God. Everybody who's come to God has done it the same way. They've heard the gospel. They believed it. They repented of their sins, confessed Christ. They're willing to be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. And rising up from that liquid tomb, they now walk in a new life. Sure, I'm the same handsome, dashing, debonair, you can stop many times fellow, but inside, but inside, I'm a different, I'm a different man. Now I'm not my own. Paul says, you are bought with a price. So glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are his. If you're subject to the invitation, if there's something that we can pray for or you want to obey the gospel or your answer, you have a Bible question uh, that you want the answer to, we invite you to come now as we stand and we're going to sing the words to On Bended Knee.